live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018, brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Been a busy welcome welcome back to Washington, D.C., everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with John Furrier. We're covering the AWS Public Sector Summit. Barry Russell is here. He's the General Manager of Worldwide Business Development and Operations for the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog. And he's joined by Dmitry Alperovich, who's the co-founder and CTO of CrowdStrike. Hot new company, just raised a boatload of dough. We're going to talk about that, but welcome, gentlemen. Thank Thanks you. for Thank coming you. on theCUBE. Barry, let's start with you. So we saw Teresa pull up a slide. I tried to count. I think it was over 200 ISVs and SaaS providers for, for GovCloud. Uh, the marketplace is booming. What's going on from your perspective? Yeah, well, so we launched Marketplace into GovCloud at New York Summit uh, last year, back in 2017, and, I, and we launched with a little over 400 products that were available, and the team has more than uh, doubled that now. There's 950 or more products available, but the exciting thing for us uh, is that today we were able to make SaaS, uh, SaaS subscription, SaaS contracts available uh, from partners such as CrowdStrike. It just gives customers more flexibility and choice in how they deploy software into a region like GovCloud. Yeah, so Dimitri, we're going to get into the funding and, and the news in a second, but from your standpoint, marketplace, why, why the attractiveness, um, no concerns, it's all systems go, go hard in. What's your perspective? Absolutely, AWS has been a huge partner for us since really the beginning of the company. We've built our entire business on AWS. Uh, we're a cloud endpoint security vendor, so we have a little agent that lives on every server, desktop, laptop, in both on-premise and cloud environments, but the back end is all on AWS where we process massive amounts of data. And the exciting thing uh, in the last year or so in partnering with AWS is being able to offer that capability to their customers through the marketplace where every asset that you have on AWS can now be protected by CrowdStrike. And we're very, very excited about that. And actually today, we launched our uh, Falcon, is the name of our product, on GovCloud offering uh, to target primarily the federal government as well as the state and local and other enterprises actually that are interested in that higher level of assurance that GovCloud provides. What specifically, can you just drill down the product? I want to get, make sure we get that right. So you're on Amazon. You're protecting right. Amazon endpoints within their cloud. That's great for Amazon commercial enterprises. What's the, just repeat one more time in the public sector piece. How does that work? Yeah. Who's the customer? Does it, is it just the agency or is it also enterprises who work with that? Talk about the dynamic. Yeah, so when you look at our customers, it's a mix of large enterprises, about 20% of Fortune 500 co uh, companies are our customers, and various federal agencies. And basically we install on every machine they have that runs Windows, Mac, or Linux systems. So servers, desktops, laptops, everything within the environment, but there's no on-premise equipment. So the agent connects to our cloud, which runs on AWS, and we collect all the execution activities that are taking place and apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to discover security threats. So it's a big data problem, and we collect over 100 billion events every single day. Just to give you a sense of how much that is, in two days we process uh, the amount of data that Twitter processes in a year. So really huge, huge amounts of data. So Barry, do you, yeah. when you go out to partners, I mean, do you even have to sell them on this concept? Are they like beating down your door? What's that dynamic like? Yeah, no, um, we, you know, we work with uh, partners to, well, first of all, we have to get them to architect uh, for AWS. So before we even think about listing a product in Marketplace, Dimitri will tell you, um, they have to first architect uh, to run well on AWS so that when the software is deployed or the customer accesses that environment, um, it's running optimally. And the customer is protecting both assets that they have running on AWS and on-prem. But I think vendors have really warmed up to the idea of Marketplace as a sales channel for them. And the reason for that is we really serve two different types of customers. One type of customer who can go to the public Marketplace website, subscribe to a product, deploy that, and immediately purchase it. And then for large enterprise and public sector federal government customers, we still have that feature of private offers, which enables the customer and the vendor to negotiate on price and terms, but still transact digitally uh, through Marketplace and have it all seamlessly billed by AWS. Lots of flexibility for sales teams that are in the field. Okay, so they work out the, the financial arrangements and you guys facilitate that, that experience. That's right, we handle the, uh, the deployment, subscription, and billing for the customer. And, uh, so obviously, you know, the commercial space SaaS is exploding. You know, what, are the, what are the drivers in, in federal? Are they similar, what are the differences? 
for customers that are uh, wanting to, to move to SaaS-based applications, I think it's pretty simple. Um, customers have reached a point where they don't necessarily want to manage um, the underlying infrastructure or, or software itself. So they're really looking to manufacturers like CrowdStrike who have a fully managed SaaS-based environment running on AWS. All the customer wants is the outcome, the functionality of the software for it to be performant and do what, do what the uh, vendor said that it was going to do. Managing all of that infrastructure and underlying technology, um, that's the expertise of the manufacturer themselves and the movement to SaaS is all about simplifying for customer. Talk about CrowdStrike news, I want to get to the valuation question. You guys are valued over $3 billion, just reported on siliconangle.com and around the world. You guys raised $200 million in a round of funding. Total okay. capitalization is what, 400 million roughly? Yeah, over 400 million. Okay, over the so you're feeling good today, right? Very good, very good. <laughs> more than anything else, it's an indication of our growth. Uh, we've doubled the company in terms of revenue last year. We had a year-over-year -year increase of 500% in terms of $1 million deals that we've closed. So it's really an indication that we're separating ourselves from the rest of the pretty crowded endpoint security marketplace and establishing ourselves as a leader. And what's the money going to be used for? Mostly expansion, sales, marketing, It's uh, further expansion and growth internationally, sales and marketing, engineering, helping build out more of the platform capabilities. I want to get your take on the cloud, because you guys built your business on day one. We were commenting off camera, same with our, our company. We've never owned a data center. Have you ever owned a data center? <laughs> we, we do a few things, small things, but most of our stuff is on AWS. So what's, uh, for the people out there that are trying to do cloud that don't have that clean sheet of paper startup like you guys were seven years ago, the key to success, to, to really take advantage of the cloud, to not just migrate to it, but actually use it. Well, you know, it's interesting. In security, it's been a, an interesting journey because when we started back in 2011, doing security in the cloud was a heresy. In fact, I remember meetings with major banks uh, back in those days when we're telling them about our plans and how we're going to do security in a very different way, and they said, you know, this sounds intriguing, but we'll never be a customer because we never do cloud. Now most of these guys are customers. So uh, the mindset has definitely changed a lot. And what we're seeing now is actually our competitors that for years have been trying to compete with us by saying, well, we're on-premise, CrowdStrike is cloud, you can't trust cloud. Now they're desperately trying to move to the cloud. And of course, unless you build it natively in the cloud to begin with, it is very, very hard to do. You can't just put an appliance in a data center and call it a cloud, and that's what they're struggling how do, with. How do the customers determine whether something's got this, how does it pass the, the smell test? Because you, know, you, you can say you do things, what's the flaw in, in having that non-optimized, fully cloud ready or ba bo born in the cloud solution? What's the, what's the test? That's, what's that's a great question. So one test is scalability. We've replaced a lot of our competitors because they just couldn't scale because they use traditional SQL-based databases, single appliances, not a multi-tenant environment, and you deploy it to 200,000 endpoints, and the thing just comes crashing down. So that's one big thing. And then in terms of better security, unless, this is what the cloud really gives you in security, unless you can aggregate all this data, and we process 100 billion events per day, and do machine learning on that data to try and discover new types of attacks, you're not leveraging the benefits of the cloud, you're not delivering better protection. We've had many interviews over the year, Dave and I, with, around security with Amazon, and you, you took a lot of heat on like it's not secure. Turns out cloud is actually becoming more secure. You're an expert in security, you've done a lot of threat analysis over the years, looking at your bio, and you're successfully leading a great company. Hackers love to attack the, the, where the data is, right? So the cloud's complexity, if you will, or the distributed nature, makes it less hackable, some say. What's your take on that? What, how do you view that, that opportunity to say, look, if I put everything in one spot, I can brute force it or the, I'm going to get a hacked. What's your take on using the cloud as an opportunity to have better security? You know, in this day and age, almost every single company that is not considering moving to the cloud is making a huge mistake because the reality is when you look at the security teams that Amazon has or other cloud providers have, they're way ahead of virtually everyone in this market. They're way ahead of the big banks that have a lot of money. They're certainly way ahead of the federal government. So you are getting the best of the best in security technologies. They have the same level of scale that we do in terms of seeing all these types of attacks and can react a lot faster. So yes, while it may present itself as a bigger target, the reality is you're getting much higher level of protection than you can ever do yourself. So what's the inside scoop on the tipping point? You were talking before, years ago, uh, uh, financial services customers, for example, said never, we'll never go to the cloud. We've had many interviews, <laughs> that's an evil word. That's right. What was the tipping point? Was it, was it the realization that companies like Amazon could do a better job? Was it fear of missing out? Was it economics? Was it, 
Was it was it the the losses that they were taking? What was I, it? I, I think it was a combination of everything. And it's funny because in those days we actually asked them, well. Uh, how did you feel about virtualization when it came out? I bet you didn't like that either. And they're like, no, we didn't like that. Now we use the virtualization. Yeah. How'd you feel about open source? No, 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 we hated it. Now we use it, right? So it's a journey for a lot of companies. Uh -huh. yeah. Whenever something new comes out, that's a big paradigm shift. But a few years in, typically they realize the adoption. What we're seeing now, particularly in the public sector, is that realization that the commercial sector went through probably three or four years ago. And now we're seeing the big push in the executive order from the president that you have to adopt cloud, you have to move to modern IT infrastructure, and we're seeing a lot of success in the federal government agencies that are realizing we need to do security in particular very differently, and the cloud is a huge differentiator. Talk about anything, anything you'd add to that, Barry, your perspectives on it? No, we're seeing enterprise customers, across, and not just financial services, across all industries. You know, on the public sector side, um, you know, you have organizations like Goodwill or City and Newport, and then on the enterprise side, you know, you have really large organizations like Siemens or 3M. Um, that are not only leveraging AWS, but have also started leveraging the solutions that are available in the marketplace. And um, I think in the past couple of years, we have seen a turn, both in enterprise customer and public sector customers that are really starting to, to adopt cloud and move to that as their primary mechanism. And we have seen in the last year huge adoption in the public sector across many sensitive agencies that are starting to adopt our solution on the GovCloud platform because they're seeing the benefits of that security It's a no-brainer, really. If you look at the speed and scale, you can do things, but you got to check the boxes in the public sector. A little bit different than uh, the commercial enterprise. Different. So talk about the public sector. We're here at the Public Sector Summit. This is like a reinvent in and of itself for that ecosystem. What's the current landscape look like? What's the orientation? What's the posture of their technology strategies? Uh, what's their appetite? I mean, can you guys just give us some color commentary on the public sector customers? Sure. Go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the reasons that GovCloud was, was built and stood up was to give customers that needed um, you know, FedRAMP or, or ITAR compliancy uh, you know, an, an, an opportunity to environment, uh, 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 operate those workloads that they were moving over. Um, here's what I would say, you know, it's not just traditional public sector customers um, like government agencies or the federal government that are operating um, in GovCloud. It's also enterprise customers that serve those needs. So there's this cross-section of pollination of um, customers and consulting partners that are serving the federal government and government entities and large educational institutions or state and local government. But they want the same level of innovation, um, scale, they want to free up their developers uh, to develop new applications and services for the citizens that they serve. They want all the same things that the enterprise customers that we've been talking about have had for a number of years. They want the exact same thing. The paradigm shift, to me, we were talking off camera about you know, public sectors looking to the private sector because there's leadership there. No one says, hey, let's just do what the government does. There's no real inefficiency use cases there. You mentioned paradigm shift. How has the paradigm of operating and, and servicing and selling and delivering product value to the public sector change. I mean, we still hear you know, the Oracle thing you know, was in the news about the DOD Jedi project we run you guys. So the, the old way of selling and procuring is changing. It, it is, and, and the fact that customers can now leverage in Amazon and buy through the marketplace um, all these services directly from Amazon without having to go and do separate contracting vehicles uh, and separate procurement is really huge. But the other benefit you get is the SaaS deployment model and time to value. Traditional security solutions, as an example, take literally 12 to 18 months to deploy. We had an agency uh, in the US government that bought our solution recently and deployed throughout the entire agency in two weeks. So that ability to automatically get value of the solution, help secure the enterprise, is something that you can only achieve. You know, I talked to a lot solution. of people in DC, we've been covering, we open up more coverage here, it's so hot market for, for um, the cloud area and the, certainly government as well. And then off the record conversation, I won't say the name, but he says, look it, I can't deny the Amazon solution, this cloud native stuff's amazing. When have prices ever gone up? They don't, they go down, but they get the, but they take more um, account control because they get more penetration. So the prices go down. In the old way, prices went up. Right. So again, this is, the, this is the shift of the mindset where you get more business, but you're driving the prices down 
at the element level? Is this, is this a key thing that you're hearing too? Absolutely, and when you look at some of the customers that, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for you, but that Amazon has acquired in terms of the intelligence community and others that you would never think would ever move to the cloud given the sensitivity that they have, and yet they've, they've realized that to do things differently, to accomplish their mission, they have to use the cloud. So we're absolutely seeing that paradigm shift, and the nice thing is that it's coming both from the bottom up with these agencies realizing they have to do things differently and there is support in the White House in terms of IT modernization that we need to adopt the cloud to be successful. So, so do you feel like we'll finally start turning the corner in security? What I mean by that is if you look at you know, some of the metrics about okay, a, a, a company gets infiltrated, they don't even realize it for whatever, 275 days. We spend more on security every year but we feel less secure. Is the cloud beginning to change that? Are there some of those metrics or even subjective measurements are we starting to, be, I'm happy to spend more, but I want to be more secure. Are we starting to see the fulfillment of that promise? Absolutely, no question about it. And I'll give you a very concre concrete example. Uh, we actually launched uh, two weeks ago a guarantee. If you're a customer using our service and you get breached on a system we protect, we pay up to a million dollars of various costs that you have because we believe that we can actually secure you and we're willing to put our money where our mouth is um, and establish that guarantee and there's no one in the industry that's doing anything oh, that's like that. That's putting your money where your mouth is. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, usually these guarantees are, okay, well you get a free month of service. No, no, no. We, we will pay cash to reimburse various expenses, incident response, legal fees, everything else that co comes into uh, the Congratulations breach. for taking that step. I mean, others are going to have to follow. Yeah, you that's know, good leadership. Well, what did the guy from the CIA say on stage, Dave? You had the quote. Yeah, uh, he said cloud that uh, security uh, uh, on cloud its security's work. worst day, right, cloud security is, on its very worst day is far better than my client server systems. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there it is to your point. Okay, yeah. let's get uh, the plug in for you guys. So you got uh, eight months ago, you started working together with the marketplace. We did. Talk about that relationship, how's it going, how's it working, what do you guys do? You're doing selling products together. Give a quick update on the relationship between Amazon. Yeah, so our Falcon and platform uh, in the last eight months has been on, on marketplace where customers that are coming in and provisioning resources on EC2, on AWS, can immediately get Falcon to protect those resources and that's been a fantastic growth area for us. We've also been partnering on the new Guard Duty offering that uh, Amazon launched last year. We're the intelligence provider for that platform. So it's been a great partnership. We're looking to do a lot more, and particularly with the Guff Cloud and the public sector. Last hey, word? Well, for us now, we're able to have a solution we can recommend to customers that's fully SaaS-based running on AWS, uh, you know, and proven in its capability. So it, it, you know, it's great to partner with their sales and alliance team on the commercial and public sector side. Uh, we're going to look forward to seeing what we can do for the rest of the year. Well, Barry, thanks for coming back again. Thank it's great you. to have you on theCUBE. And Dimitri, wonderful. Congratulations on, uh, on the raise and making some progress. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, buddy. John Furrier and I will be back with Stu Miniman. We're live from AWS Public Sector Summit. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>